Hello, people of YouTube. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 24 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma, and you can find me on the internet, that's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry, as Selma's Nits. Welcome if you are a new viewer. Welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Thank you for joining me today on this new episode. I think the previous one was something like three weeks ago, and a lot happened in these three weeks. There was a lot of sewing, which I will show you, and some knitting as well. And in the knitting department, something pretty crazy happened. I became monogamous. I will show you the project which brought that change. Time will tell how long that lasts, but so far it's working. So let's grab a drink, grab a whip, and um, let's start. Concerning knitting, I have one finished object, which is my mittens, my shine mittens with a pattern from uh, Pia Cameborn from the Cameborn podcast. I actually, um, I actually <laughs> washed them and blocked them this morning. They are, they, they are actually going back on the balcony to finish drying because they're still a bit wet on the inside. Um, so they are going back outside as soon as I'm done filming this podcast but i really really like them so I, the second one is not on its blocker i'm using my um selbu blockers from uh, selbu blockers sorry from knitography um patricia she's also p fortune on instagram they are really really nice she makes them herself by hand with uh, wood from her farm and i also have a pair of her sock blockers i just think it's so nice to have something which actually is meaningful you know and not just some ugly piece of plastic as blockers and these for um what i would call scandinavian shaped mittens you know with the with the tip um are i don't think they are that common actually so i i will put it back later yeah um i don't think they're that common and they're actually really convenient for these shapes you know i'm way too lazy to uh, make my own so i thought that it was a good way to support a small farm and patricia and yeah i really really like them they also smell really nice mm. i have something with smells i'm sorry no not really um so these mittens i didn't follow the pattern concerning the needle size. I used, um, so it calls for size two millimeters and I used size 2.25 on the cuffs and thumbs and 2.5 on the hands. Because when I started trying them on, well, I knew that size two would be way too small. And when I started, oh, I'm gonna take off my watch so you can see better. The cuff is fine. The thumb is fine as well. I actually went down the needle size back to 225 because when I started knitting it with 2.5, I recognized that it would be too wide and not that pleasant to wear. So yeah, the hand in 225 would have been way too small though, much too tight. So it's just, just fine right now. The blocking really helped um, evening out the surface. I, I used uh, Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight which was just perfect for that. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh yeah, they are slightly different. Look, it is exactly the same pattern, but you have some differences here. I think I mentioned them last time. Someone uh, remarked that, that it was possibly because I actually was changing my yarn, well, changing hands with my yarn. So sometimes having the red um, to the right and the, the white to the left and sometimes switching and that might be why the tension was different and hence giving different results when the pattern is actually exactly the same. These issues are not um, appearing on this on, on the left mitten because it was the second one which I made and I paid more attention so that's probably the reason. Um, what, what else can I tell you? Actually, nothing, nothing. I really, really like them. I cannot wait for this winter to actually be able to wear them. Um, and I will make more mittens, definitely. Because these 
uh, color work mittens are just so fun. So much fun to knit. That's my only um, finished knitted object. Yeah. I'm not having tea today. I'm having infused water with uh, lemon and mint. We had friends over last night and I prepared a big jar of it. So I thought I would, since we still had some, I put some fresh water on top and I'm just drinking it. It's really nice because the weather is super warm today, super sunny. I kept the window open this time because it seems like my neighbors are done vacuuming, partying, whatever they were doing last time. So you may hear the birds, but it should be fine. So on to sewing. I have three projects to show you. I'll put the glass away because I'm pretty clumsy. We don't want an accident. So the three um, the three projects which I'm going to show you right now, I, um, I made them for a wedding which took place last weekend. I had planned more but I didn't have time to do more because I had, well, I had agreed to help with some sewing for the wedding itself for decoration. And to be honest, uh, two and a half meters on two and a half meters um, blankets and tablecloth are just a pain and they take a hell lot of time. So that's all I had time to finish and well, it's fine. It was, it was enough. So for Friday, there was the civilian wedding. So at the town hall and I made this skirt. The pattern is Keep Cool, Keep Cool from uh, Ivan Soufflé, Ivan S. And it's super easy, really, really easy. That fabric was not the most simple to cut and knit because it's so wrinkly, you know. But in a whole, no big difficulty in making like at all, you know. Um, it's there's an elastic all around i chose to make these pockets you had three possibilities no pockets and um, button line in the middle these pockets and uh, well basic flat flat square pockets in the middle of the skirt i went for these and i'm really happy i did uh, i think they look really nice they're very convenient i love pockets and i thought i would dislike the color more but it's actually okay if i wear it with white you know it's fine I had planned on making a top to go with it for the wedding, but I had no time, so I bought I bought something that was fine anyway. And I also uh, wore it on Sunday for the brunch because I had no time to make the dress, which I had planned. I will make it later so at some point this summer. It doesn't matter; I can still wear it. Uh, the second thing which I made was another skirt. Well, I think I showed it to you last time and it was not finished. This time it was, so it is finished. Um, it's a bit of a hack between um, the Emka Marrakesh skirt. I made it in black linen last year and the botanic pants, which I made in wool in the winter. Um, what I did was I used the skirt part of the skirt, well, I used for the low, well, anyway, whatever. I used the skirt for the main part and for the belt, I used the pattern of the pants because I didn't want something with ruffles in the front, you know, I didn't want a fully elastic band, um, waistband, belt, however you want to call it. So I made it flat in the front and, and um, elastic in the back. I had to tighten, a bit, tighten it a bit, like the day before the wedding, because it was slightly too, oh, sorry, slightly too um, wide at the waist because I wanted to wear it uh, high waisted. But it it worked really fine, so I was very happy about my hack. To be fair, the skirt has a lot of defects, defaults, small fails, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only one to see them, so I think I will I will just leave them there. Um, I would be afraid of making things worse because the fabric is actually pretty fragile. So I will just leave them be. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's like mid-calf. I had planned on wearing them with heels, but when I first saw the ground there at the, well, where the wedding was taking place on Saturday, I thought, mm, no, I will wear sandals. It was basically grass everywhere. So heels would not have been a really good idea, particularly with wonky uh, ankles like I have. 
So sandals it was, and it was maybe slightly too long for sandals, but it still worked. So that's that's what matters. The top which I wore with that skirt was this one. It's a back is back by um, Vanessa Pouzet top, and it's the version with the the low uh, back because it has a V neck. The original one has a V neck in the back, and you have two possibilities: so either um, a high V neck or a low V neck. And I went for the low one. Um, I added this bow and a small piece of lace there because I was planning on wearing it with a bra which had like a full regular uh, skin colored bra but I didn't I put on something really really sexy and classy and elegant these uh, adhesive silicone things you know well let's say it's not the most feminine thing but it's super convenient and it worked really well um, I put this because with a regular bra strap and attach you know the the, the the attachment in the back it was slightly too wide to be hidden only by the bow so i added the lace underneath um, in the end it worked well and it balanced the top quite quite well so i'm happy i put it there even if i didn't actually really need it um, it's french seams all all around yeah all over it's actually slightly annoying here because it's supposed to go down there this way but it's not sticking down hmm. I don't really know how to actually make it stick maybe I should iron it um, again because they're they're attached to the well facing the bottom let's say but they're not sticking there <laughs> and I cannot really um, like put a stitch in the middle because it would be it would be visible I really like this fabric which was com completely opaque it was not transparent at all which was really good um yeah then all in all it was a really really nice outfit so that's what i wanted and we're done with the finished objects we can go on with the works in progress which is actually a work in progress it's the Norte cardigan, cardigan by Imke von Natusius. Uh, it's part of the um, latest Breeze Making Stories magazine. Um, yeah, you won't really see it well because I actually picked up all the stitches for the neckline this morning and I don't have a, a long enough cable so it's a bit tight, let's say. But yeah, I finished, um, it's all, what's the word, uh, twisted, twisted stitches in the, on the, on the ribs, you know, and they will be the same along the neckline. I started it 10 days ago on the 12th of June. I recognized when I cast it on that there was a cal ongoing until the 30th of June, so I'm hoping that I can actually make it and finish it before next Saturday. Uh, it might be a little optimistic, but you never know. I actually I actually uh, uh, posted a poll on my Instagram stories asking for your opinion. Could I make it or was it just a long shot? And people were also really optimistic about it. So thank you for your trust. And I really hope I can make it. I just have the neckline and the sleeves to make. So we will see. Hopefully it works and yeah, it's going to be a good thing that I don't have very busy days at the moment at work and I can actually bring my knitting and knit during day. So let's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not so much fun to uh, not have a lot of work, but if it can help me knit faster, then that's good. Well, let's say I can make do with it. Um, I'm knitting it with Noisette Sport by Squirrel's Yarn in a shade which I actually had her custom dye for me. Well, she didn't have it. I, I ordered it at a salon in Clamart and at a fair festival. Sorry. Um, 
she had this shade in a different um, yarn quality, so I asked her to dye it on sport weight yarn. I'm very happy about it because it, it's it's a light gray with a lot of blue undertones and nuances and some darker places, and it's really nice. I'm not alternating alternating skeins because I'm crazy like that, and I don't want to. Um, what can I tell you? Oh yeah, I'm knitting it with size four millimeter needles, and except for the ribbing, which is three and a half, but maybe on the neckline I will do it in three seventy five because it feels a bit tight on the waistband, on the lower ribs. Um, the pattern calls for two and a half, but it was way, way, way too tight. And someone else remarked that they had had the same issue when swatching that their, if they followed the pattern requirement for the needle size, it was just impossible, not working. But I think it was under my IG post where I talked about it, uh, that the designer actually said that she is a very loose knitter. And so that would explain why I being a tight knitter don't get the same gauge on my swatch. Yeah. I think I told you everything. Maybe next time I can actually show it to you finished and maybe I can actually make it by the end of the cal. We will see. Um, I didn't buy anything. Maybe next time I can show you my fiber share package because I sent mine, but I haven't received um, the one which I'm supposed to. Um, maybe next, maybe in between this episode and the next it will arrive, we will see that. I wanted to tell you about the um, If I Want Exposure I Get My Tits Out um, campaign. So the Tits Out Collective by Countess Ablaze, uh, which I find is an amazing initiative um, where I will cut the story and make it short, but basically she encouraged other dyers to take inspiration from her own colorway called uh, If I Want Exposure, I Get My Tits Out and create their own version of it. And I think it's between the 1st and the 31st of July. Basically, people send, sell it and sell these colorways or these yarns and the benefits or part of the benefits go to charity. Uh, over 200 people are taking part. I know that there are indie dyers, but also um, makers and um, pattern designers. I think it's an amazing campaign and I really, really encourage you to go follow Countess Blaze if you want all the updates and all the information. I think very soon she will put out not a list but a visual thing so you can actually see all the um, participants in the campaign. And yeah, I hope, um, I hope we will all participate well of course to the extent our means allows but but yeah it's uh it's really it's really really a brilliant idea and a brilliant thing and i hope that people will follow i already have pre-ordered some things even if it's actually really really not my colors normally but i thought it was a brilliant idea and i wanted to take part to it so yeah um well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you um, were inspired or at least entertained. If you did enjoy it, please like, comment, subscribe, share, everything, whatever. Um, it helps a lot and it's highly appreciated. Um, in the meantime, until next episode, enjoy knitting, enjoy your sewing, enjoy your crafting, whatever it is, and uh, take very good care. Bye.